everyone, it's Shel C from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you a what you might do with your gel prints collage. This is a, what I consider paper painting and I'm using a piece of wood in as a canvas instead of a canvas. <laughs> it's a wooden canvas. This is six by six and this is probably one of the ones that I'll give away for the 10k subscriber giveaway when I get to 10k. So if you guys love this little collage, you might want to share my channel. <laughs> Get some more people subscribed so it comes sooner. It's growing, but it's not growing super fast. So with this panel, I gave it two coats of gesso and then I got out some of my prints. These are all deli paper. And you know, in March and April, I was doing that gel print challenge. So I have a ton of prints. I also got out some of my color boxes, which have little um, scraps of things in them in different colors. And because it's Memorial Day weekend and also um, Armed Forces Day was on the 19th, I was thinking about poppies. Also, my friend Peg painted some poppies the other day and they were really beautiful. And I love poppies, uh, particularly California poppies. So they're not really the red ones, but I uh, used to live in the high desert of California and the whole hillside would just be orange one day. And you'd be like, oh, wow, what happened? And then you you drive up there and it's just fields of poppies. They're beautiful. And here in Arizona, they grow as wild, wild flowers along the sides of the roads during the spring. So I was thinking about poppies. I was thinking about Memorial Day. I was thinking about the people who fight in our armed forces and die for our country and I was thinking about um, the California poppies all of that those things were all what was what was driving this particular uh, collage so I picked out some different uh, papers out of my collection to use on the project and kind of laid them laid them out to make a background and I originally was going to make a green background but then I decided on this kind of pale yellow and lavender color background with some uh, horizon line at the bottom with these these pieces of of the same sort of a yellow but in a little bit deeper color mixed with some rust and some some brown colors um, those pieces so I have a 12 by 12 gel plate right so I was printing eight and a half by 11 for my book and so whenever I would place the eight and a half by 11 sheets of, of cardstock down, there would be paint around the edges. And so I would take a piece of this 12 by 12 deli paper, lay it on there, press it down, and then pull it up so that I didn't make a big mess on my hands all the time, um, pulling up all those edges around the eight and a half by 11. So that yellowish brownish paper are the strips that are left. You're in, you end up with this piece of paper that has strips all around the edges and that's what those were and I have a ton of them because I made so many prints so they're actually kind of cool and I, I think I might use them for some abstract work so there's my background um, I'm happy with that except for I do want to do a little bit of color blending sometimes there's some edges and this this really light piece that's going from the left hand side in I want to blend that a little bit and I want to blend a couple other edges. So I put some lavender, some white, and some of that uh, Naples yellow color acrylic paint on my palette. And then I'm just picking it up with my finger and kind of running along the edges where I want to blend in a bit and um, kind of, uh, I don't know how to say it, but you see what I'm doing. <laughs> so I don't really have to, to have to say it. Just you know, it makes it makes the edges seem a little bit more cohesive when you do that. So then I have a piece of deli paper, which is translucent. And this is the way that I like to do uh, paper painting collage. I like to make my drawing or sometimes an underpainting on a separate piece and then collage onto that and then attach it, trim it out and attach it to the painting. So uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm drawing with a graphite pencil. This is a, a mechanical pencil with soft graphite in it. And I'm drawing 
my design onto there. And the, the nice thing about deli paper is that it's, it's sturdy enough to hold up to my pencil. It doesn't tear like uh, tissue paper would. If I was trying to draw on it, I'd have trouble with it. It's sturdy enough to hold up, but yet it's so thin that when I collage on top of it and then take that collage and put it onto the panel, you, you don't know that that extra layer of deli paper is there. Nobody knows. It's just sandwiched in between the two layers and it's so thin that it's completely irrelevant that it's there. So I, I discovered doing this a while back. I was doing torn paper collages, um, which is, an, is paper painting, and I was tearing all the little pieces and tearing them into shapes. And it was, it was um, not something I could show on YouTube because it's too tedious. And, you know, you're hunched over tearing these, you know, I've got to tear this little exact piece. And when you're making tiny details, you're tearing something sometimes that's the size of, you know, the top of an eraser or something. I mean, it's, it is tiny. And when I discovered this, I could get the same type of effect much simpler and much easier. And so I trace over the top of those pencil lines with black so that I can see through on the other side because I'm going to collage this paper onto the front and then I'm going to flip it over to trim it out or tear it out, whichever I want to do. Um, I think this, this time I trimmed it, but sometimes I even just tear it. But I've got my lines and I don't have to worry about making an underpainting. Um, I don't know if I've ever talked about underpainting before, but uh, my old method would be to draw this design onto my panel, paint it with acrylic paint, and then, you know, picking out the same colors of papers that I have similar, you know, I'd paint. I wouldn't be a fancy painting, it'd be a messy painting, but just to get those areas filled in with paint in case when I was collaging something, I didn't get, you know, something completely covered, then I was covered with the paint. And that's the process that I did for a long time. And this process is much more enjoyable to me because I don't have to, I mean, I am tearing the pieces into shapes, but I don't have to be so precise about what I'm doing when I'm tearing because I know that I'm going to trim it out on the, along the line on the backside. So this uh, pattern or drawing or whatever is very complex <laughs> and it has things going over the top of other things and when you have that type of a situation, sometimes you have to cut things apart um, and you might have a hard time putting them back together. It's kind of like a puzzle, but there's a lot of very thin, the, the stems on a poppy are like just super thin. They're thin. And I didn't want to have fat ones, so I need to trim those very, very slim. And so when I get to the trimming process, it gets a little bit complicated, but this process is completely enjoyable. I just find different pieces of paper and these are all still uh, gel printed deli paper. And I'm looking at the colors. I'm looking at the, the combination of colors to get kind of highlights and shadows and um, interest on my flowers. If I just had a piece of, you know, orange paper, it would be flat. It would be boring because it would all be the same color. There would be no shading. There would be no highlights, nothing. It would just be flat. So by using the, the gel printed deli paper, you really get a variety of pattern and shape and color. And it's, it's one of a kind. It's so unique and random and it's just, it's awesome. So here I am trimming out a section. I just, I wanted to, uh, do one little section so that I could show the whole process from start to finish. So I'm, I'm, I've got the back now and I've got some very sharp scissors that have a titanium coating on them. Or I mean, not titanium, but Teflon coating so that they don't stick to the paper because I did dry it, but it might still have a little bit of, of matte medium on it. And then I of course collage that onto the background making sure that I press very hard so I even like put a little bit of gel medium on my finger and I rub it across to make sure that there aren't any bumps that shouldn't be there um, of course the paper is slightly bumpy because it's collaged 
one paper on top of another, but um, it's not that you don't want any bubbles. So then I'm happy with that. I'm excited. And so I go ahead and work on the next section, which I do end up cutting into different pieces. Um, starting with the green first and trying to think about lighter green, darker green, brighter green. I don't want them all to be the same because I, I want the variety. And I'm figuring that the stems are probably something and that's sort of in the background that I should do first. And then um, the leaves and then I work on the flowers last. Because I figure the flowers are going over the top in most cases of the stems, if that makes sense. It's just, it's, it's, you just have to think. <laughs> you can't do this mindlessly when you have this complicated of a drawing. You have to think about what's in front and what's in back and be a little bit patient, but not a lot patient because this is so much easier than the way I used to do paper painting. It's so much easier. So, so, so much easier. So I'm not so concerned that the, the stems look fat because I know that I'm going to trim them. And if I wasn't going to trim them, then this, then I would have had to tear them a lot slower and a lot thinner. And um, yeah, it's just different and fun. So I put the petals on before the center on the open flowers because then the petals can all overlap with each other, but they won't see it once you put the center on. If I put the center on first and then tried to to put all the petals on, I would have to very carefully tear the bottom of the petal and stick it in there so that it didn't overlap the center. So those are the type of things that you just, you think about and you start to realize how it works. And, um, you know, it's, it, this is just fun for me. I love this. this. I could really do this all day long. I do a lot of other things, you know, for my channel and for challenges and things, but this is my love right here. This is collage is my thing. I just, I adore it. And I haven't done very much of it, you know, recently. <laughs> I need to do it more. So interestingly, I woke up this morning. This is uh, the 25th, but you won't see this until tomorrow. But um, my channel was apparently voted top 15 in art journaling channels. So isn't that amazing? Is uh, I don't I didn't apply for that. I didn't nominate myself or anything like that. Um, it just happened. I don't know. It just came up in my feed on Facebook and also in my email. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. So I guess I've been doing a lot of art journaling because apparently my channel has a lot of art journaling on it, which it does. I do love to do art journaling, but this time I'm doing a piece that you can hang on your wall. So then I spent quite a bit of time, <laughs> which I cut out of the video, trying to figure out how all these fit back together and everything connects back up because I kind of separated some things and yeah, it took me a minute. It was like a puzzle. I had to really move them around and figure out how they all go back together, but I did figure it out. So now I have my Liquitex Matte Gel Medium, which is what I've used for the entire process. The bottle's almost empty. I need to order a new one. I'll order it from Amazon. <laughs> you know I will. That's what I always do. Um, so I'm, you know, pushing them around positioning, making sure that everything is pressed down and is in the position that it needs to be. And then I go over it with my finger to make sure there are no bubbles um, so that everything is perfectly ready to go. And I glue it all down. And then in some cases, things didn't really connect up. And so I had to add a little bit like right there. I'm not sure what happened to that little piece in the middle that goes from the pod down to the ground. So I ended up putting in one, um, but that was fine. I got it all figured out and it's all working good. And uh, what can I say about this? There's not a lot to say. I mean, this is just gluing, but of course I left in the process and I did want to tell you that because it was complex, it was a little bit tricky. And I, I think my composition is the same as my drawing. I'm not sure because I didn't take a picture. It would have been smart 
and it probably would have been a lot easier to put it back together if I had snapped a picture of the drawing on my phone and then just I could look at that and see what position everything goes in but I'm happy and I think it's what I think it's back to what it was before so I'm tucking all the paper on all the sides around the back so that the little lip of the wooden piece is all covered because I like that I don't like there to be a raw edge on either my canvases or my wood wood canvas doesn't matter I do that on like even you know one or two inch deep canvases I do that so the last thing I'm gonna do I could just leave it like this it's pretty cool but I'm I don't know I like to add shading and highlights I just like to do it it's part of painting to me so I'm using my um, Faber Castell pit artist brush pins which are in India ink and because this surface is all sealed up with matte medium I have a few seconds to blend it so that I don't get a harsh line so I'm just kind of going in areas where I think there needs to be a shadow or something you know where I just think it needs to have more definition and adding in some different colors like I've started out with the greens and I've got I think three different colors of green and then I think I end up bringing in a kind of a turquoisey teal color as well yeah there's that one and I blend that in as well I think I think that the the centers of the um, leaves need to have a shadow down the middle you know because leaves tend to fold in the middle and so I add that in with the India ink so India ink once it dry is permanent so that's the reason that these particular markers are really the best for this I could use a water soluble product or an acrylic paint even but this this is super easy for me to control and it's quick and um, doesn't take me forever like if I had to paint or something um, just this these are just great pins I love them and I have a big set so I don't know it's got like 40 maybe in it of a lot of different colors so I have a lot of color options then there's like a really dark brown to kind of add a bottom shadow to the centers where the, the petals would be on the bottom would be kind of I don't know connected and and folded up and then I use this yellow ochre type color to just add to a tiny bit of of areas on the petals not a whole lot I don't work on the petals very much I like the way I, the way the petals are um, the way they're kind of stripey looking with the different papers and then um, let's see what do I do after that oh yes then I add white Posca pin I there's not a whole lot of pro projects that I do that don't include white Posca pin this is an acrylic paint in a pen and I just um, go around and kind of add some little scratchy highlights and I'm blending it with my finger the same way I did with the with the pit artist brush pins I blend with my finger as I go uh, same thing I'm blending the Posca pin um, into the background and once it's dry it's permanent and um, of course the final thing to do to this will be to seal it I'll seal it with a spray sealer but all the products that I've used have been permanent so I really wouldn't have to but I'm going to just you know just because I'll spray it outside but um, I think it turned out cute I like it and it will be one of the 10 6x6 projects that I give away for my 10,000 subscriber giveaway when it comes hopefully by the end of the year so I'm just stocking up in advance <laughs> I might scan this one too and maybe make a print or something because I think it's really cute but anyway if you like this video please give it a thumbs up uh, subscribe and turn on your notification bells if you haven't already so that you know when I make a new video leave me a comment or a question below and of course share this on your social media that helps my channel grow that's it for me thanks bye bye